Hello and welcome to the Analog Toys live stream. And for anyone who watched the uh, last episode of the three POA, you'll notice that I have a different background behind me. Um, spent a lot of time and effort trying to create a, a new vintage background. I'm a bit bit tired of the modern toys, but uh, we're here tonight to talk about uh, a very very popular vintage toy line. Where we're going to talk about Star Wars and completing that uh, that that Kenner run. So. I brought in two of my really, really good friends uh, and two friends who I know have already completed that uh, that Kenner run. So maybe they can give me some advice and guidance on how I go about acquiring those last few figures. So without further ado, I'm, I'm going to bring in my first friend, um, Michael Schaefer, longtime supporter of the channel. We're here to talk about Star Trek. All right. Oh, wait, wrong, wrong stream. Sorry, I, I apologize. <laughs> When we were speaking in the green room, I was like, you didn't have any Star Trek gear on. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Yes, we're here to talk about Star Trek Wars, created by <laughs> George Roddenberry and Gene Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my other friend is also a Michael. I don't know how I'm going to do with Michael and Michael tonight, but uh, we also Schaefer. have my dear friend. Hey, Just call me Schaefer, call him Michael. Schaefer, and here we have Michael from Retro Blasting. How's it going? Good. How are you, sir? Good. Can't complain. I, I, I you... complain a lot on my channel, apparently. So I, 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 I'm complained out right now. I'm, I'm good. I just wrote a script. Uh, it's not, I, I guess it's in the other room. I just wrote a script, classic Retro Blasting complaining about vintage toys. I'm going to be filming it tomorrow. So everybody can just brace themselves for more of that. But tonight, I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm good. So, is that a new T-shirt? Yes, this is a new T-shirt from a great artist. Um, this is a he does a lot of Tomb Raider stuff, and this is a the latest shirt he did. So nice, mm. yeah, nice cannons. Yeah, this what's that? <laughs> nice cannons. Yeah, yeah. This is no, but this this artist is re he's really good. So every time he puts out something new, most of the time I end up buying it off of his um, his uh, Redbubble shop. So yeah, so, so those cannons aren't overrated, right? The, these are not overrated cannons. No, these are these are awesome cannons. Um, and that's not a euphemism, although you can interpret it that way if you like. So well, gentlemen, I, I have um I have quite the slideshow prepared for tonight. Um I thought I'd better do something like that to try and keep us on track. Keep me on track. I'm the one who goes off on tangents most of the time. Um so as, as you know, I've I've been collecting vintage Star Wars for a long time, and I never really had much of a desire to complete the the full run. But I've gotten so close to it now, I kind of wanted to make twenty twenty four the year when I did complete the run, uh, and it's the last seventeen that I I need to close out. Mm -hmm. I've still got a few more to pick up. I've got one that's in the mail on its way here. Um, before we get into it, I'd be interested to know when you guys completed your uh, collection of the action figures. So I, I'll go with you first, Schaefer. Like, how long ago did you sort of acquire the last figure you needed? I want to say about roughly two and a half, maybe three years ago was the, the final okay. figure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I think and a Michael, lot of us... Yeah. A lot of us know that Michael did it a decade ago. Yes. Because he shared it with us. With Was that the very first appearance of Broken Vader? Yes, Broken Vader appeared for the first time on the channel at the same time I completed the last 17. And um, there was an amazing supercut of all the Broken Vader moments yesterday. That was a, a lot you of fun what, to go through. <laughs> I didn't even realize when I was doing that yesterday how well it would dovetail into your topic. I didn't even think, and now you just brought that up and it just hit me like a bolt of lightning. I'm like, oh, that actually worked out. Yeah, it, um, it was uh, 20, uh, 2014 and... Um, uh, at, Technically, which Jason Anderson will support me as the best kind of correct. Um, technically, it was 2013 yes. when I completed it, right. but I sat on the box for a year because, as anybody who watches my channel knows, it takes me forever to get around to doing the videos I say I'm going to do. So mm -hmm. I, I, I sat on it for a year because I wanted to open it in real time. And I took it on faith that the eBay seller had actually sent me a, a pop-up lightsaber r2 in the condition that he had advertised it in and yep. then i lost track of it for a little while and then i finally did the video so it was probably late 2013 when i bought it 
Yeah. Jason Anderson agrees there. <laughs> There's actually a link for that video, the iCaramba, in uh, in, oh. the, in the description of this yes. video. Yes, but, 100%. Uh, I, I put the link to the video and uh, and the link to the, the Retro Blasting channel. So, yeah, for, for those, surely, I'm, I'm assuming everyone in the audience knows, but, yeah, we, we're talking about the first appearance of Broken Vader, which was iCaramba, the Magnificent 17. Um mm -hmm. One of the first retro blasting videos I ever saw, I think mm. the first one I ever came across on, um, which wouldn't have been when it came out, it was 2016. I discovered the channel, uh -huh. um, but I came across part two of your uh, Kenner Ghostbusters. So the uh -huh. part one's obviously the real Ghostbusters cards. I came across that, and then one of the next videos I saw was yeah, the Magnificent Seventeen. I was like, mm -hmm. this is my kind of channel, and I'm. <laughs> You'll hear all these years later. So. <laughs> yeah, that was around the time that the YouTube algorithm actually worked the way it was supposed to work. And yeah. um, you would actually see videos that were getting recommended to you based on things you actually liked rather than, you know, a bunch of TikTok crap that we get recommended now. But anyway, yeah, it was um, it was weird to um, end that that journey. And I think that's the reason I held off making the video was because I knew the moment that I opened that after that, it would just be variant chasing for the rest of my life and, and upgrade figures at that point, it wouldn't be yeah. distinctly different characters. Like it would, you know, that, that part would be over. Um, so I think that's probably why I held off making that. And the other reason I held off making it was because I knew I was going to have to do this huge time lapse of every star Wars figure I ever owned in this like yeah. multi dissolve thing. Yeah. Yeah, and there was, um, you know, there's some people in the comments going, why does the Carbonite block disappear and come back again? Yeah. Oh, it does. I can answer this. We, we, first of all, this is this is a wonderful live stream that is analog toys. I'm going to make this answer real quick because I don't want this to descend into the <laughs> Icaramba retrospective live stream. We're on, we're on topic. We're on okay. topic. We're talking about the last 17. So. All right, fair enough. Um, good eye, everybody. Uh, the reason that the Carbonite block disappears and comes back is because... I was trying to, for, for the best of my knowledge, and nobody's memory is this perfect, mine's pretty good when it comes to the order in which I acquired the Kenner figures as a child. But I lost my carbonite block and didn't reacquire one for a long time. And sad to say, the carbonite block got lost out in the backyard because it's that light translucent brown. And the moment you drop it at dusk, you'll never find it again. And um, yeah. So the reason it disappears is deliberate. It disappears because I lost it. And then as it got into my, as the, the time lapse gets into my adulthood years, the carbonite block reappears because I acquired an authentic vintage one because I had retained mm -hmm. my childhood figure. You'll also notice that the Tuscan Raider at one point disappears we lost him entirely. We don't know what happened to him. So it was kind of a journey that kind of, as best as I can remember, showcases my entire childhood collecting journey into adulthood with Star Wars. So, yeah. And now Brian Dillingham's uh, heading over. To <laughs> <laughs> I have this feeling that uh, a lawnmower had to have gotten it at some point soon. Oh, after. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, I would like to see that garden today. And yeah. <laughs> One last thing on that video. I, I thought it was amusing. Somebody actually asked, what, why is it called Icaramba? Like, you don't get that joke, really? You don't? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a pun on uh, Ramba, who's one of the last 17 figures. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, I'm interested to know if, if, for you guys, we all played with Ken of Star Wars in childhood. And today we are all collectors of this particular line. Did either of you guys have any of the last 17 in charge? Like, Michael, you were just talking about having Han Carbonite. Were you familiar with all of the figures in, in that range? Because I, yeah. I yeah. certainly wasn't. I, yes, I was. They were um, they were on sale. Uh, when I say on sale, I don't mean I was. I saw them in stores before they went on clearance. In other words, when they were new. And um, mm -hmm. I was in a, a Toys R Us and um, a, a toy store called K and K Toys, not KB K and K. It was at my mall, my shopping mall, um, and they had them on sale when they were new. So I was very aware of them. And uh, in the process of uh, the 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 run up to the end of the Kenner line, 
I th that was already 1985. So while I still loved Star Wars, um, the selection of those 17 figures did not jazz me all that much, and it was harder to get the other figures at that point, minus Jedi Jabba's Palace aliens from the previous wave and Ewoks. So uh, I got Han and Carbonite. He was the first last 17 figure that I that I bought. Uh, and then I went ahead and got um, uh, Endor Luke Skywalker, who was my last Star Wars figure in childhood. My brother, at the same time, got the Ewok Lumat with the bow. Mm -hmm. And um, even though Lumat falls into this gray area where he is part of the last 17, but they also consider him like... He appeared on normal Jedi cards right at the tail end of 84 alongside um, it was Papa 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 Yeah, thank you. Uh, those yeah. two. So people, real pedantic people will be like, ah, oh, technically they're not, it's not the last 17, it's the last 15. And it's like, well, most of us didn't see those Ewoks until they were on Power of the Force cards. So that's why they're roped in. Right. Yeah. That's kind of like that. The millennium was really 2001, but everybody celebrated in 2000. Right. Same support of <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, sent away, I sent away for Anakin mail away before he was ever a last 17, but Kenner never sent him to us. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, thanks, yeah. Kenner. I thought you really cared. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, for, so for me in childhood, I, I was familiar with Anakin because he was mm -hmm. also a mail away in the UK. I never had him, but I knew, you know, kids in the street had him. Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated by um luke and stormtrooper disguise because a kid down the street had him with that and i thought that removable helmet was so cool but they were literally like the only two last 17 figures i was even familiar with until i got into collecting mm -hmm. um as an adult so well, what, what about you Schaefer? did you have any of these in childhood i did not have any of the last 17 by 85 i mean i saw them on the pegs i remember speaking of the removable helmet stormtrooper luke i remember being in hills pulling it off the the peg mm -hmm. looking at it thinking it was great but by 85 i had moved on to mask and i don't know centurions didn't come out till 86 but i was heavily into mask so and the coin thing i was really pedantic about the the card backs like once they switch to that power of the force it just kind of like in a different way but kind of like when you saw action force international heroes and you thought it was mm -hmm. a totally new line this felt like a different line so i really wasn't interested in it by then but i do vividly remember the luke i remember seeing the stickers for the mail away anakin on you know tons and tons of card backs but uh yeah. you know I, I didn't have any the last kenner star wars figure i bought was squid head that's mm. the last oh. one i remember buying or getting i don't remember if i can't remember if i bought it or or got it as a gift, but that was the last one I got. I got him as a gift, and he made me cry like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those was one of those rare kid acting spoiled moments because my brother was handed a sand person, and I recognized uh, that this was before Jedi. Jedi was in the theater that summer, and we it, was, it only been out a few weeks, and we hadn't seen it before. And by the way, guys, kids didn't care about spoilers. I wasn't upset that some alien got spoiled for me. I was upset because he was this ugly alien thing, and I didn't know what he was, and my brother got something I recognized. In hindsight, uh, as an adult, I really, really like Squidhead. He's one of the nicer yeah. action figures that ever came out of that line. And, and I agree. So, yeah. Now, the second to the last one I got, and I got with my own money, because for a present, I got a blue lightsaber, and mm -hmm. I still have all of it, a blue lightsaber Jedi Luke, and I wanted the screen accurate green. So uh -huh. I, I hunted that out, and I, I vividly remember buying that. Wow. Um, but yeah, uh, so I'm lucky to have, I'm really lucked out there to have both of those and still have them. But uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it's funny how, you know, the memory and what you thought. And as speaking of spoilers, I was the one that was pissed that things were blacked out. It's like, what the hell is that? I want to know what what is that figure going to be? You know, mm -hmm. I... I didn't care about spoilers. Right. Didn't spoil anything. Oh, when they blacked out the Ewoks on the back mm -hmm. of the card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then they revealed yeah. them and they were Ewoks. And it was like, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Maybe they knew no one would come to see the movie if, or I, I was hoping for like that, 
that black astromech droid from the Death Star or, or you know, something cool like a robot like that or something. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, man. It's yeah, yeah. Fucking... Yeah. We only had to wait 35 years for Stan Solo to do that. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Which is I, I don't remember. Of... Go, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say the Stan Solo, it's a kind of a way to continue the collecting, even though we're kind of, or Michael and I are still, you know, we're done and you're almost done. Well, I'm I'm almost done with the figures. I'm not done collecting because there's a there's still. I meant I, I, with the figures. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, what I'm yeah. I'm I'm still very much collecting. You you're not, are you, Chafer? You kind of you're kind of. No, happy I'm still with collecting. It. No, no, I'm still. Star Wars, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think what I last got, other than a figure. Uh, I mean, I still get the retro stuff because I wanted that Mon Mothma. Mm -hmm. And it was a cheap way to army build to get a, I mean, two of them I didn't care about, but the Gamorrean Guard and the Imperial or the mm -hmm. Emperor's Royal Guard or whatever the technical name is. Um, yeah, I mean, I still buy things. I I still, I'm not done collecting. I'm still getting things. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I've, 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 I thought we'd had that conversation that you were sort oh, of no. No, done no. with Star Wars. But right. mm -mm. Uh, I'm just going to catch up with a few Super Chats. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. Philip Story, thank you very much. He says, good evening, Destroyer. I love the new shelf. Have a great stream and hope I can hang out for a bit. We hope you can hang out for a bit as well. So thank you very much. Um, Jason Anderson says, YouTube is inundating me with Evangelion videos right now. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <my chagrin. laughs> oh, 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 I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm one of those. I, I've never really had any interest in anime. The only anime I ever watched when when I was a kid was um, Battle for the Planet. So I, uh -huh. I, I loved that. Um, but again, it's it's one of the things about your channel and the way you produce mm -hmm. your content is I would just want to hear your perspective on whatever the topic is, whether I'm interested in the topic or not. And I thoroughly enjoyed your Evangelion feature. Oh. Thank you, because I had never seen it before either. And I was just talking to Scott Williams this afternoon, and, and we were on the subject, not of Evangelion, but we were on the subject of just content creation. And he said the same thing you did. He was like, I don't really have an interest in anime, and, and I know that you'd never seen that before, but the fact that you made a video about it, I knew it would be worth watching. And I said, yeah. well, I appreciate that. I said, because like you do, Tony, I said, uh, I always try and make my videos with the assumption that somebody that's never heard of what I'm talking about before will not be lost. In other words, they will get the full experience watching the video. They don't have to know about anything ahead of time. Um, yeah. Which is always, I think, the most I don't. I can't speak for you on this, but the most frustrating part about making any video for me, even the one I just scripted, is the first three paragraphs. Because when you get into the filming of it, you have to break out all this extra stuff to redo the context of what you're about to talk about, even though it doesn't relate to the rest of the, the video. Like in other words, you have to sit there and go in the eighties, there were all these toy lines that had really easily lost accessories. And then you write out like this and this and that and that, and Oh my God, do you remember that? And then you go back and you read the page and you go, I got to find something for each one of those sentences to make it visual. I hate my life. And then you then you have to go off and do all this. Yeah. But it helps the viewer because then the viewer isn't lost. And and right. that's key. So yeah. Yeah. And just uh, to echo know, what Tony said, I same. I I four there's four anime I like, uh Speed Racer, mm -hmm. Voltron, Battle of the Planets, or Gatchaman, and uh what's the fourth one? Robotech. No, older than that. Oh, doesn't matter. Um Star Blazers. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Uh, but again, because of the way you produced it and, you know, the mm -hmm. information that's gained, I, I get to learn about something that otherwise I wouldn't have. And certainly now I will never watch it, but at no, least I, look, I know about yeah, it. I'm not watching it. <laughs> it's, very, <laughs> it's very important to give everybody context if you want them to share your pain. Like, in other yeah. words. It's like, I need you to share this pain with me because I can't hold it in anymore. I don't want you to go watch this thing, though. I just need you to understand. And so I'm going to give you every single bit of d difficult context so that you're on the ride with me. And or, in a pleasant way, hey, guys, 
I really didn't realize how interesting the whole rollout of Spice Girls toys was. Let me take you on a little journey that I discovered. And then everybody can go on the ride with you on the video without having to go do the research that I did. Right. So. Yep. It, it, it's funny what you're talking about with the paragraphs. I'm currently writing a script about G.I. Joe Army Builders. Uh -huh. And I started, I started writing the script yesterday. And I rewrote the first three paragraphs five times. And I'm still not happy with it. Because mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I, I started writing... I went off on this tangent about 1960s G.I. Joe, how, you know, the originals were generic. It was just the soldier, the pilot. Mm -hmm. and, then I'm, and, then, and then I'm like, I'm going to have to pull out all my 1960s G.I. Joes to do the video. And it's like, no, write, write that paragraph, scrap that paragraph. <laughs> Come at it from another direction. Everybody, Tony's starting to cheat. Tony is starting <laughs> to cheat. I, I was definitely cheating there, but I, I thought no, the video is about a real American hero. Let's just keep it to, to, to that. Right, so, right. And you um, want to talk about comparing losing accessories. 60s and 70s Joe's had oh. tons more accessories than anything, you know, from the 80s or 90s. GI. But they scaled they, slightly larger. True, true. Very true. <laughs> And very, very breakable. You know, mm, it was that yeah. hard ABS plastic. So when you dropped an M1 rifle in childhood, that barrel snapped off. Mm. You know, you ended up just with the rifle up till the, the end of the wooden stock, and there, there was nowhere for the bullets to come out. <laughs> yep. uh, Scuba Pete, thank you very much. He says, look at these great lads. Just saw a complete Endor Luke with card back for $300. Couldn't pull the trigger. Are you guys up to speed with current pricing I, i'm not i've heard yeah. it's exploded but i haven't yeah. looked in a while so this will be interesting i i, I assumed that you weren't because I, I don't keep up with pricing unless it's something i'm actively trying to acquire so yeah. some of the some of the slides i've got for later on um might just blow your mind when i show you some of the prices of stuff the the only thing i've been looking at on and off the last few months is the palatoy cantina playset because that's a variant I'd really like to have, but it's very, very, very expensive to get in good condition, like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna keep looking at it for a while. Like I'm not, <laughs> you know, that's that's what the blow mold. Like, that's that's the blow molded base and the cardboard doors, right? Yes, yeah. but it, but the nice thing about the blow mold is that at least it it molded like a couch around couch into oh, the yeah. lower step rather than it just being this random thing. And, I, yeah. I didn't mean it as lesser than. I oh, just, no, 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 no. I was just, I was just adding yeah. detail. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, if, yeah, we were having that conversation the other day, Michael, and 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 I think I said to you, I was like, "Well, have you seen the price of just the Kenner Cantina lately?" Oh, I couldn't. I did when you said that. I was like, "Clear, surely not." And then you, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I can't. That's insane. Yeah, that, it's something I'm looking for at the moment. I'm like, oh, I can't justify those prices. <laughs> the doors, the doors for the freaking cantina alone can go for, well, the last time I looked like 75, 100 bucks a piece. You know, it's it's ridiculous. Oh my and Pete, just, just be patient. Uh, mm. Chris at Stan Solo is going to make that Endor Luke with a removable helmet, and it's going to be a lot less than whatever, $300, $400. That'll be great. Yeah. That'll be great. That'll be real. Yeah. Then, then I, I can I can ditch the poncho and I'll have my uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jedi duel Luke that I've always wanted. Exactly. Uh, yep. uh, Daniel Dorian, thank you for the super chat. He says, uh, "Love the Medio Spider Man hanging on the firehouse, which you, you can't see here, but now you." Can. Yeah, there he is. So I did a Patreon video yesterday, and then as I was editing it, I was like, "There's a bit of a blank space there," mm -hmm. and I, I put my childhood action man on top of the A team van and. Moved a few things around so you could see it better. So uh, thank you, Daniel. Much appreciated. And Anthony Whitehead, thank you. He says, uh, I always love to hear you guys talk about vintage Star Wars toys and accessories. Your passion for collecting really shows and how you speak about it. Well, it's a very, of, of all the vintage action figure lines, this has got to be the most popular, I think. Mm -hmm. The oh. most collected line, you know, probably. It's definitely bigger than G.I. Joe, I, I think, for, for the amount of modern people collecting it. Yeah. I Relatively agree. true statement. Yeah. I think so. it's certainly the most, ex well, one of the most expensive for sure. But yeah, it's, I would think it's the most popular. I mean, I mean, just, just based on the views of your video of toys that weren't even made. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I would think that that, you know, kind of says something about popularity. 
Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, there's quite a lot of slides here. I, don't, I can't remember what's first. Okay, so this here is a snapshot of the figures that I have so far with one more in the mail. So out of the last 17, there are 12 there, one more in the mail. So that means there's four figures I've got left to get. And I think we can have a guess at what those four figures are and why I'm really struggling with the concept of paying money for them uh we'll kind of, yeah yeah uh we'll get onto that a, a, a little bit later um but first of all there were two luke's in within the last 17 and you know kenna really had this and not just with these two kenna really had this aversion to getting luke correct mm -hmm. all the way through you know the yep. farm boy luke has a yellow lightsaber X-Wing Luke, I do like that he comes with a blaster, but he never actually carried a blaster in his X-Wing suit in Star Wars. Right. They didn't update the figure for for you know to be a, a, mm. a snow speeder pilot. Right. Um, what did we get next? Bespin Luke, yellow mm -hmm. lightsaber. Hoth Luke, no lightsaber and a rifle that he never carries. Right. Jedi Luke. Some came with blue, some came with green. So they just never got this figure right, did they? No. Um, Would you say that Hoth Luke is the worst face sculpt of any Luke, even worse than the P head Stormtrooper Luke? I just. I would say Hoth Luke is the most inconsistent in terms of example to example. Okay. You can so find. There are some good ones. Okay. Yeah, you can find Hoth Luke's where it doesn't look like a scare mask has been just stretched over, you know. <laughs> Hannibal Lecter wearing another piece. Yeah, of yeah. Thing. Most of yeah. them, you're right. Most of them look like Hannibal Lecter wearing someone else's face. Yeah. But there are you can find them where they look pretty Kenner decent. Like, okay, and, I got it. But it's it's a it's a crap shoot. You fortunately, you know, if eBay sellers are showing you what they have in hand, you can make a determination. Yeah, I I recently upgraded my Hoth loot because mm -hmm. as I was as I'm going through this journey of finishing out this collection and doing a few Star Wars videos. I've been going through, I, I need to upgrade that figure. Um, mm -hmm. Like when, when I went to Joe Fest last year, I actually upgraded a bunch of figures. I upgraded my large head Han Solo, my ATST driver. Um, yeah, so when I was looking for Hoth Luke, there was a seller here in Australia who had about five or six different ones. And like Michael said, I went through each different listing mm -hmm. and found one of the best heads. But he's... um. He's got the permalene, like he should be just leaning on the side of the, the bar. That 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 action figure is the leaning tower of Luke. <laughs> Endor Endor Luke here is, I I picked him up on eBay not too long ago, just because mm -hmm. I, I came across him at a at a good price, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's what really set me down this rabbit hole because I hadn't bought. A vintage Star Wars figure that I didn't already own, or that wasn't an upgrade for some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's really not a good figure. <laughs> no, he was the last figure I bought as a, a kid. Um, that doesn't give me nostalgic feelings about it. But but the advantage that I had was because he was the last Star Wars figure I ever bought, and I was seven years old at the time. That was it kicked me over just enough in age where because I was kind of temporarily getting out of Star Wars and he was the last figure in the line I bought, he stayed in near mint condition with his blaster and everything throughout my whole life. So yeah. unlike unlike Carbonite Han, where that Carbonite was temp too tempting to not use and then get lost out in the yard, uh, Endor Luke ironically never went out in the backyard, even though you'd think he would, and, and his, his um, blaster certainly didn't. And so I ended up, keeping so when i started my journey for last 17 i already had him in tow i was like oh well he's near mint there we go we're done you know <laughs> like, yeah. that was good so yeah yeah i have no idea why i'm just going to share this anecdote i took a lot of toys outside for some hmm. reason i never took my star wars toys outside i took mask toys out <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it was smart or just, I just didn't, I, not even in the snow. And I mean, mm -hmm. got snow all the time and they're great. You know, some of the stuff is greatness. Yeah. I just, yeah. I don't know why, but I think that's why I never lost 
accessories maybe because they were in the house all the time i don't know just no, I, and again i did i never took my stuff out that often most of my stuff i found out later got lost because i just missed a blaster here and there on the carpet and then my mom right. just vacuumed them up right which that hurt later on in life when i found out that so oh, yeah mm. Yeah, I, I I didn't lose a lot of my accessories in childhood because I had one of the Chewbacca bandoliers and I used to use the loop and I was really pedantic about keeping all of the weapon accessories in the little case. But then it didn't do me any good because when we moved to Australia in 88, my parents made me sell all the Star Wars stuff at a yeah. garage sale. I was I was only allowed to pick one toy line that I was was allowed to, to you know, one box of toys and it was my Action Man stuff that came and... I think I, I sold my Millennium Falcon, which had was complete except for probably the training ball, and I sold it for like a pound fifty in oh. 1988. One pound fifty. Oh. Wow, Jesus! It, it went to a good home. It, it was a friend of mine down the street who who got it. So, right, went to a good home. The things we tell ourselves. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> damn right. <laughs> All right. Um, so these are the these are the other heroes in in the line. Um, so you've got the the pop up saber R two, um, General Lando, the A wing pilot, the Anakin. I picked that up on. I haven't been back to the UK for like six and a half years. But when I was in the UK, I picked that up for like ten pound in like a, a flea market in near Brighton Beach. I was walking around. Um, so that was a that was a good purchase. Um, the one you'll notice that I, I don't have here is Han Carbonite because that's the figure that is currently in the mail. Hmm. And that's probably the most I've ever paid for a loose vintage Star Wars figure. Hmm. Um, yeah. I, I'm trying to think. I, I can't remember exactly because it was 2014 when I, when I got Pop-Up R2 last. I know I paid something over $100 for... Uh, yak face and um and then i paid something around there for pop-up r2 and i got L stormtrooper luke and barada and a man a man as a lot off of a seller on rebel scum's message board uh, mm -hmm. but but even even with it being 10 years ago the prices hadn't the prices we thought were high then and they've really spiked since then but it's weird to think about how i've paid more for other vintage loose complete action figures from lines that aren't anywhere near as popular as Star Wars but but you would think given Star Wars prices now that I would have paid a fortune and for some reason the timing just worked out where I didn't yeah no I I've, I think the most I've ever paid for for a three and three quarter inch figure mm -hmm. um was the the Palatoy recolor of the G.I. Joe Stalker that came with the Z Force headquarters. So they uh -huh. called him Jam. So right. it was it was Stalker, but he had a different color beret. He had the Z Force. That's the most I've ever paid for a single loose three and three. Mm -hmm. like, when it comes to 12 inch, it's different because right. Action Man come with so many accessories. It's actually more like buying a killer whale trying to get everything complete. So mm -hmm. you do have to pay a, a, a lot for that kind of thing. So um, yeah. but yeah, Han Carbonite cost me a pretty penny and it's i'm getting a little bit frustrated that it's i bought it from here in australia and two weeks and it hasn't arrived yet it was coming from sydney but well um, all the shipping all the shipping has been wonky the last uh since the new year um i finally sourced an authentic dennis fisher sonic screwdriver for my seven inch doctor who or nine inch yeah. whatever whatever the oh. dennis fisher. and yeah, yeah. it was stateside it wasn't even coming from the uk and guess what that was on January 19th and it ain't here yet. And the tracking has just been holding since January 22nd because of extreme weather here in the United States. Oh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sweating bullets hoping that it eventually shows up. Um, Cause otherwise, yeah. you know, I don't want the refund. I want the item. So, yeah. 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 Australia post is telling me, I, I think there's some, um, some rail disruption. So like a lot mm -hmm. of the mail that comes from the East coast to the West coast, it comes, it comes by a train. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They, they've got rail disruption. So I think I'm always happy to pay express postage, but a lot of eBay sellers in Australia don't even offer it as an option because express, it comes by a plane. Like it'll get here in two or three days as opposed mm -hmm. to two or three weeks. I, you know, and it's typically, it's normally only like five or $10 more. Mm -hmm. Um, well, that yeah, parcel I shipped you hasn't 
hasn't updated, I think, since January 10th or yeah, I've, I've, that date. I've, I've, I've been looking at that, but it's um, I think it's finally departed the US. <laughs> oh, good, good. Because I had just yeah. maybe yesterday I looked and I'm like, really? No update? You know, cleared customs. Okay. It's mm -hmm. a week and a yeah. half. The, uh, yeah, I, I think the, the next one, the next update should be when it arrives in Perth. And then for me, it's always a gamble. If it arrives in Perth, it's going to get here pretty quick because it's the same state. If it lands in Melbourne, Brisbane, or Sydney, uh, that's another week or two. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it, it will get here. Everything does yeah. get here eventually. So, oh, and one last gripe: um, Michael ruined. Not that Barada was a great figure, but now it's all I hear is it's Barada every <laughs> time I hear that name. That's it's it's Barada every uh -oh. time. So, uh, so the short anecdote about that is, is, um, that wasn't even part of the original script. Um, I, um, I was editing the video and I felt like, yeah, it's got some funny stuff in it. Things are working, but I felt like it needed a little bit of extra. I felt like there were some areas where it was just kind of by the numbers. And there was that part where I was in the commentary, I talked about how Barada looks totally different from all the rest of the Java's palace guys yeah. because of the color scheme of his whole outfit. And I was like, okay, this is where it needs to go. And I ran up to Melinda and she's the musician in the family. And I said, can, can you do me out this little ditty? Because I want to sing this song like this. And she went and she recorded something off her keyboard and, and gave it to me. And I ran back downstairs and whipped all that together in like 45 minutes. So that, that little bit got dropped in late. Um, because yeah. before that, it was all I saw was I don't want to be a pirate. That's all I heard and <laughs> saw when I saw it. But that's been replaced with it's Barada. <laughs> He's the life of the party, man. He's he like, is. <laughs> His puffy pirate shirt. Yes. <laughs> He's hanging out with Buck Rogers and Gung Ho and all the greats. They all yeah. want to get a little piece of that. So he also looks like uh, a, he also looks like if what what would happen if a ghoulie was an adult? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So well, every time I think of ghoulies and Star Wars, now I think of Luke Stormtrooper because of that mm -hmm. same video. Yeah. Now yeah. you've just done that to me with Barada as well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Barada Barada is saved by his relatively cool uh, card photo, where you see that yeah. the actual design of the alien guy is actually quite quite cool like the face yeah. and everything like the mask is actually really cool so i just chalked that up to kenner's sculpting at the time was getting better but the technology hadn't quite gotten there where they could truly capture that mask um so yeah plus it it's the it's one of the three that complete the the day the earth is still you know homage name yes. thing. so that's kind of cool too yep 100 percent so what do you guys think about this figure on the screen here? Um, it reminds me of that meme where it's from some true crime schlock show and you see the really, really like chonky guy and he, the caption that he's saying to the interviewer is like, and then she put her hands around my neck and started to choke me and everybody, you know, that it's like, is that even possible with this guy? <laughs> um but uh, yeah, I always was weirded out by this Han Solo, uh, even as a kid, because he had no neck. His his he yeah. looked like Peter Griffin um, from Family Guy. Like he just um, and again, I loved the carbonite trick. That's one of the reasons I was so hell bent on getting him as a kid because I loved Empire Strikes Back, and that I felt even though this was Jedi adjacent with the card art and everything, it 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 plays both. You can you can apply it as a uh, Empire figure or a Jedi figure because of the right. carbonite. I love the whole carbonite gimmick. Agreed. Without every okay, every single Han and carbonite figure that's ever been made in any line from th this until the '90s, without the carbonite block, that Han is always kind of eh. It doesn't matter which one you choose. The Han is always eh. He needs that yeah. carbonite block with him. Yeah. It's almost foreshadowing to what. Hasbro would do with the power of the force to muscular, at least on the upper torso area, you know? Yeah. A little yeah. bit. That, that car carbonite Han Solo without the carbonite yeah. is like Ken without Barbie. He's yeah. just not Ken up. 
Like, it's, just not, <laughs> it's just not enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like you uh, said, the, the gimmick and the concept's cool, but the figure alone is weak. Yeah. Weak. All right, we'll catch up on a few chats here. Uh, yeah. Michael Hinkson, thank you very much. He says, uh, OG Star Wars line, the origins of the four-inch figure scale. Almost. I mean, Origins really, Micronauts, Fisher-Price, but uh, this is what popularized it for sure. Um, thank you very much for the super chat, Michael Hinkson. Um, Alejandro says, did Kenner sell a toy DL-44 blaster in 78-79, or did a toy of Han's blaster not appear until Empire came out? That that toy blaster... Um, you it know, definitely had a Star Wars sticker on it. And then an Empire sticker. So yeah, yeah, there was definitely whether it was seventy eight or s probably more seventy nine. Yeah, there the, definitely. Is, there the is, there original, is. Yes, the original blaster was sort of like a dark gray color with black uh, uh, battery cover knobs, mm -hmm. and it had the Star Wars foil sticker. Mm -hmm. And then when Empire yeah. came out, they made the blaster black, and it had black triggers and black knobs. And then they revised that where they went to silver knobs mm -hmm. with orange button and trigger and then jedi just changed the sticker to jedi on that it was black plastic with the orange and the silver knobs so and then in the 90s they just brought out a bright orange one <sighs> right which for go for for goad for went for whatever it deleted the knobs <laughs> and it just had a screw on um battery cover right. so yeah and the sound that came out of it was weak yeah. You couldn't hear that sound. You that that power of the force two one with the orange plastic. You could pull the trigger right next to your ear and you wouldn't hear that sound. It was weak. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, you know, I I think I had one of those harm blasters in childhood. I definitely had the biker scout one. I definitely uh -huh. had that in childhood. Uh, I think I had that. I, or maybe my, my older brother probably had it, and you know, that's why I remember playing with it. But uh um, here's a name that we both know, Michael. It's uh, it's Jeremy Kerr. Oh, yes, the, the famous Jeremy Kerr, very much so. Uh, thank you very much, Jeremy. Says he found Anakin at a Goodwill 10 years ago, and with today's price, is likely the only last 17 I'll own. But who knows? Well, he's part of the last 17, but he's the easiest to get of the whole line, so yeah. and also. If Drew G's experience is anything, Jeremy, there's always the possibility that you'll stumble into a collection that'll be offloaded for relatively cheap to you, and you'll end up with 12 out of the 17, like yeah. with all their weapons yeah. and everything, if you're Drew G. Yeah. I'm just saying. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Um, Brian Dillingham, thank you for the... Well, this isn't a Dillinghamism because he's actually asked a question for once. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Which figure do you wish had been made? Schaefer. Oh shit! You have to go. Sorry, <laughs> you have to go to me first. Um, well, I, I if I wish they would have made either a removable helmet and or Luke or a with the you know with the uh, flap open, the tunic flap open, a true you know dual. Jedi Luke, that would have been the one I wanted the most. Or that tied with a removable helmet Vader. Mm. I, I don't maybe maybe that one if if I was really pressed, let's go with the Vader, the removable helmet Vader. Mm -hmm. I would have wanted um oh uh, well, I, I know that Stan Solo has already delivered on a lot of these wish fulfillments for us, but I, I would have uh gone for um Either the uh, the Jabba's Palace Leia, uh, mm. which we never got. It was always rumored we were going to get it. We never got it. Um, as a matter of fact, Leia was the only one of the three heroes that didn't get a new figure in the 1985 Last 17. She she was omitted from that. Um, and or I would have probably wanted um, Wedge Antilles. Mm. So, which yeah. Hasbro Retro still hasn't given us. So. <laughs> either of them so yeah i think um I, i'm, I'm going to give two answers to this question mm -hmm. the first answer is what i wanted when i was a kid and then the second answer is what i actually want today um so i'm going to go with you Schaefer. i always wanted a removable helmet darth vader i really really wanted that i probably would have wanted han in stormtrooper 
if I had have mm. had the Luke in, in childhood, but I just like I knew of it because a kid down the street had it. But um, today, the figure that I really want, and I hope Chris Smith is watching or watches the replay. Um, I want a a, a vintage style Bespin Escape layer. Oh um, yeah, good point. That would. Be I nice. really want that figure because, like, you always use like Hoft layer to stand in, and it's not quite right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I always felt that should have been the Bespin version of layer they should have made rather than the. You know the maroon, the maroon dress one with the cape, um, a best right. escape layer. Uh, that, that's that's the one that adult Tony wants in his collection today, and Stan Solo is the guy to do that. Hopefully, so. I mean that that best spin gown thing was that in one or maybe two? It was briefly, briefly used. Even that outfit she wore. So and and that's correct me if I'm wrong. That's the one that for the Empire line 1980. That's the layer they came out of the gate with. Hoff yep. layer came in like mm -hmm. 81 or 82. Yep. yep. They yep. came out with that first. Yep. So <laughs> uh, just uh, John R. Kelly, who, for those who don't know, is a uh, Christmas partner in the US. He's watching and he heard that. Best Fin Escape layer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I've just started something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I hope so. Uh, just Jeff, thank you. He says, cheers to you three. Founded Empire Strikes Back Complete Falcon for $10 at a thrift store on Pools Valley, Oklahoma. The last the last 17 had coins. Yeah, we're going to yeah. talk about the coins a bit later. Um, yeah, those finds are still out there at thrift stores um, and, and other places. Indeed. And we have Cosmic J. Thank you. He says, the price of vintage Kenner Mold and Kenner style is going up, e.g. Power of the Force 2 vehicles. and Yeah, even mm -hmm. Power of the Force 2 figures aren't really going up, but the right. vehicles are. They are. Um, I, yeah. I actually think, um, in fact, when, when I was staying with Michael in, in Georgia this year, I was talking about um, wanting to try and track down a Thai bomber. Uh, and I, I think we actually saw one in one of the antique malls we went to, but it was... I wasn't paying those prices. Sure. Yeah. I've got a, I'm staring at it. The, uh, the power of the force to Darth Vader tie fighter right here. The one that, uh, Schaefer has mm -hmm. on display. Um, yep. that's one of the ones that I, I haven't, you know, given away because it's a complete re redo of, you know, it's, yep. it's not just a remold. It's a, right. it's a redo, um, that one. And, um, there's this video I want to come out with. I'll get around to it this year. I hope. Um, I already bought all the stuff for it. Um, it, it was going to be called uh, Modern Modern Star Wars that that um, blends with your vintage display. And it was yep. all about those extra little pieces. And so like um, the T-16 Skyhopper that came out in the late 90s, yep. that vehicle, um, the Lars Homestead that came mm. out, um, the, the indoor bunker, which I know they've just remade the indoor bunker, but the original release of the power of the force indoor bunker still has that relative Kenner simplicity to it that the more hyper detailed one does not. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a few pieces like that, that I really need to do a video on and talk about, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. You know, I've been talking if, about Evangelion, you know, important shit. If you get the tie bomber. <laughs> yeah. If you get the tie bomber, make sure I would recommend the one without the weathering that that's just my aesthetic choice because yep. it blends better. Yeah, and the the Darth Vader one, if you can get the one without the green, yep, uh, missiles, I guess that fire. You know, the green yeah. missiles are. Yeah, I've I got think it looks better. No green missiles. It's got right. the normal missiles. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, just personal preference, and yeah. I blame Michael actually for the increase in prices of the Power of the Force too, because he did that X Wing video talking about how great it was a couple years back. Oh, when I was like disassembling it or whatever. Well, you were saying you kind of. I forget mm -hmm. you did a video just mm -hmm. talking about how well it does work and you know right. there are some like you you have first got it and I think you were like I forget exactly how you got into the video but it was something about you realized hey this is this is worth doing a video about because there are some qualities that are worthwhile in these yeah anyway yeah especially that that s foils noise I was like oh yeah. that's cool yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so we had two two imperials in mm. the last 17 one that i think is really really cool that's oh, yeah. the dude in the purple and another one that's <laughs> really, really lame <laughs> yeah the death star gunner is what probably my favorite from the last 17 
Yeah. It's a really, really cool figure. Mm -hmm. Um, This guy, though, I still don't know why I'd pay one. And this is very, very recent. He turned up in the mail this week. He's all original sculpting, too. So, like, they wasted a whole figure on him. Like, yeah. He can't even hold anything. He doesn't come with anything. Like, like, yeah, that, see, like that right there, that's a slot where you go, no Tarkin, no Uncle like, Owen, no Wedge Antilles, no Bespin no Escape Leia, Leia. <laughs> no, no, I mean, like anything, anything would improve your lineup's position than that guy. Squidhead's cousin, like anybody. It just doesn't. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it really does Snake not make fine. sense. I mean, at least you know, at least Ghost Anakin. If we're talking about similar, you know, Oswald Cobblepot hands, at least he he was something, you know, and and mattered in the film and all. Till Lucas erased him, but this is just pathetic. Yeah. This makes no sense at all. The gunner, I, I agree, with the tampos on the shoulders, and it's a gorgeous figure. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Menacing. Yeah. Yeah. I I I really like that figure. Yeah. So I've I've, you know, I've been looking around eBay, some some Facebook groups, because I'm not in many because I don't like a lot of toy Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, waiting to see some of these figures come up. And the, and the thing with Imperial Dignitary, he's notorious for the nose rub. I'm like, mm -hmm. yes. So I had the choice of paying like $200 for one without a nose rub or $150 for one with a nose rub. I'm like, $150 for a figure that's always going to annoy me that it's got this nose rub. I'm like, like my, 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 bro so I picked up Barada. Um, he was a relatively cheap purchase because I had, I had a spare vintage accessory for him in my parts bin. So I was like, right, I only need the figure. And he's not perfect. He's got a little bit of, um, in fact, you can't call it. He's got a little bit of paint missing off his off his backpack there. Um, you know, he, he's, I would call him like a C6 or a C7 condition, but that was good enough for me um, to add to the collection. But I, I, couldn't, I couldn't handle a, a nose rub on the Imperial Dignitary. No, I mean... That just that that truly is adding insult to injury with a figure that nobody should no no Star Wars kid or collector should have been put in the position of even having to buy. So if you're gonna buy him, don't hit him with nose rub on him. That's just yeah, that's the worst. It looks yeah. like he's been in a looks like he's been in a blackberry pie eating contest. It's just like just, <laughs> just he's he was brown nosing the emperor. <laughs> well, that's the thing. When when you have nose, when you have all that face rub on Jedi Luke, it looks like he's been in a pumpkin pie eating contest. But with Imperial <laughs> Dignitary, it looks like he's been in a blackberry pie eating contest. It's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so then we've got the uh, the four you know, Jabba's goons, you know, the, the three aliens, EV. So EV-99, uh, I was talking to Schaefer just in the green room before we started. Uh, I've, I've got I've got a bunch of Stan Solo. Um, last 17, I've also got a lot, a lot of originals. I am not going to go out and acquire a vintage EV-99 mm. just because of how fragile they are when yep. I can actually articulate this one and I'm not, not really worried about it. But... Um, yep. These were some pretty decent entries. I, I really like a man a man because it's such a it's so different in the in the line, you know, the size, the shape of it. It's yep. almost like a it's a character that's almost like a great diorama piece for your Jabba's Palace display, you know. Okay. Um mm -hmm. I, I think I think it looks really good. And uh, he's weird uh, enough that he can cross over like with other toy lines too. Yeah, you know, he could be an alien from anything kind of anyway uh just to re reference something that's being said in the chat from nyquist 75 um that leg curve the leg warp you're talking about on ev99 it's on my mint off card original ev99 yeah. like that that's accurate to the vintage figure right there the all oh, yeah. of those figures had a leg warp to them yeah. mine mine was off of a, a a card that looked like 
a woolly mammoth had used the card for toilet paper. Like the card was just wrecked. And when I got it, I was like, uh, and I just set it down on my, this was back in 2012 or something. I set it down on my breakfast room table and I just went like that. And the, and the bubble just went flying off. I promise you it was just that easy. Um, yep. so, and I've never moved the arms and never done anything. My EV 99 is mint loose, you know, U grade or whatever you want to call that stupid thing. And um, his leg is just as warped like that. And he's mint, mint, mint. So, And if, if you want to get technical about leg warp, almost every R2-D2's legs, he's kind yep. of pigeon-toed. He's yep. he kind of bow in. So, yep. And I, yeah, I'm guessing... Yeah, and, Go ahead. And R5-D4 as well, yeah? Yeah, right, right. The Astromex, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, and, I mean... That, there's issues with a number of the legs on the feet. Like we were talking early, Hoff, Hoff Luke's got that lean going on. Mm -hmm. yep. um, Luke in Stormtrooper disguise, he's got that very, you know, he could ride the Indiana Jones Arabian horse. He's got such yeah. a wide <laughs> yeah. even without knee joints. <laughs> yep. Yep. No. Um, right. Now we need to talk about the. So we haven't obviously gone through all of the figures yet mm -hmm. because. The figures we have not yet discussed are the are the four that I still need, and I'm going to kind of save that for for last because I, I I want to show my friends current market price for these four furry little fuzzballs. Mm -hmm. um, but before we get into that, let's talk about the coins. And when I was putting together this presentation yesterday, um, I thought, you know. I don't ever remember seeing a commercial for any of the Star Wars Last 17 figures. So I, I just went online and went, Star Wars toy commercial 1985. And a commercial popped up. And for the life of me, I don't think I'd ever seen it before. So I'm going to play that commercial now. Um, and you Is can this see... the one where they're flying over? Like the coins are flying over? Okay, sorry. Here we go. Spoilers. <laughs> Coming from the farthest reaches of space are the most awe-inspiring, the most desired gifts of the galaxies. They are the Star Wars Collector's Coins. Every Star Wars action figure comes with one. Dynamic graphic front, action story back, over 60 different coins in the collection. But the best is each and every Star Wars action figure comes with one. Every figure? Every figure. Look for the Star Wars collector's coins in your neighborhood. That commercial rings no bells for me. I don't know. Did that commercial actually air? Apparently so. I, I actually remember the commercial, believe it or not. Oh, okay. I, I do. But I mean, not that I saw it all the time, but I, I actually do remember. The, because the only reason I remember it was when um, Independence Day came out, I thought, did they like rip it off from this commercial? Because it looks, <laughs> it reminded me of, for whatever reason, my brain clicked to that commercial. So I do remember the commercial. Now, I don't remember, there was like a collector book that you could get. Yeah, I remember I, that. that. I never remember seeing that. I only saw ads, like when I say ads, like print ads for it and stuff. Right. I don't remember seeing like, yeah. So what, yeah. what really struck me when I, you know, I'm pretty sure that yesterday was the first time I'd ever seen that commercial. What really struck me was like, right, so they're coming out with this line and you've got, okay, there's some, there's some bad entries in the last 17, but you've got some cool things like instead of showing kids that, Hey, we're going to have an R2D2 with a pop-up lightsaber. No, the commercial honed in on the coins. Like that was the big selling thing. They were, yeah, they 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 were doomed. So, do either of you guys collect the coins? I, no. Uh, no, I mean the only coins I have are actually Stan Solo coins. I don't have any okay. original coins, so no, I don't actively ever. And I've never of all the figures I bought, they've never come with any coins. So no, I don't chase those down. Yeah, my EV ninety nine came with his coin because it was on the card. It was on the card. It's still on the card. Yeah. Um. The uh, the coins that I had growing up, I still have. So I have my Carbonite Han, Endor Luke, um, Lumat. And we have, for some reason, we must have acquired at some point an Endor uh, Leia uh, on Power of the Force card, card back. We got her 
during the Jedi run in 84, but we must have gotten her again because I have a Endor Leia coin um, from child. Okay. But um, aside from uh, Duflitchy, EV99, aside from him, I don't think I have any other power. Oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. This is sad. Uh, I have Imperial Dignitary's coin because the way I got, it, the way I got Imperial Dignitary was he was a uh, he was a graded carded figure, and you know how I feel about grading. Um, mm -hmm. and such justice. The bubble for his card back split at his feet because he's so bottom heavy with the robe feet. Um, yep. So he spilled out into the acrylic case. So the guy. The guy sold it. Um, he, he literally ripped the case open, not the card back, but the, the acrylic case open at the bottom to safely get this mint Imperial Dignitary out to put him in a, a bubble thing. And then he sold it. So that card back is still sitting in that broken ac acrylic case with the coin on it, just lonely as can be. Just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's grading some... Uh, uh, I... I, I, I I feel for all of the G.I. Joe collectors out there who've been grading those card oh. figures for years and now all the O-rings are falling apart and they're yeah. collapsing into the bottom, you know? Um, yeah. If if I was collecting card of G.I. Joe and that was happening to my figures, I, I would very, very carefully lift the bubble, replace an O-ring, mm -hmm. sit it back down again. Um, yeah. yeah. Don't do drugs, kids, and don't grade your figures. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't get it personally, but to each his own, I guess. Yeah. Now, but Bobby Valor is collecting the coins. And at first I thought he was just collecting the coins for the last 17 figures. No, he's trying to get all of them. So he's like going out and three or 64 or something of them. Yeah. Bobby yeah. is a special kind of insane. He's like, yeah. a, he's like a great Gatsby of toy collectors. <laughs> like, <it's> <laughs> I look at Bobby sometimes and I'm like, hey, I think everybody should be allowed to collect everything they want to collect regardless of when they were born. But as somebody who is a little younger than me and who has like genuine affinity for, you know, the the early 90s lines and and the the some of the other, you know, 90s stuff that came out, which I share a lot of that affinity for. He and I talk about Dick Tracy figures and Prince of Thieves stuff all the time. I have to admire some of his um, dedication to getting some of these more random prior to his day kind of things like the power of the force coin collection where i'm like hey hey bobby um <laughs> even us gen xers don't care about that crap <laughs> like why are you buying that? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was interesting I, I i was talking to him sometime in the last six months since i since i got back from the state so in the last six months uh and he was like you know i've, I've been thinking about getting into Ken or Indiana Jones, but mm -hmm. the prices of, of Indy and Marion, it just puts me off. And then he comes out with his new office room tour video last week, and he's got a detail for the whole bunch of Ken or Indiana Jones in it. I'm like, oh, so yeah, so you're not going to collect that. <laughs> <laughs> so he, 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 um, he, he messaged me a few months back. Um, cause Tony knows the story. Uh, Bobby was looking for a, a Luke Stormtrooper, a vintage Luke Stormtrooper. And I happened to have at the time, because Tony wasn't buying them at the time, or otherwise Tony would have ended up with it. But I, I happened to have two Luke Stormtroopers that were mint complete, you know, loose, loose complete. And um, I had them for quite a while. And Bobby was looking for one. And I was like, oh, well, don't go running around Joe Fest trying to find one. I, I've got one for you. I, I can I can send you one, whatever. Yeah. He was like, oh, okay, cool. So then like a few a few months ago, Bobby hits me up and he's like, Hey, um, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about starting a Kenner Indiana Jones collection. And I went, Oof. I was like, You're starting late, my friend. <laughs> like yeah. you're you you've got a tidal wave up against you going into that, you know, go with God, you know, kind of thing. Cause I I, I finished my Indiana Jones Kenner collection years before I ever finished my Kenner collection. Like it was years before. And um, he was like, well, I was just wondering, you know, do you happen to have any like extras? And and again, he was he was wasn't saying he wanted me to give him anything. He was right. wanting to pay, but he just wanted to get started, you know, with the collection. And I told him, I said, uh, I said, ooh, Bobby, I said, 
I'd help you out in a heartbeat if I could. I said, but I said, the Kenner Indiana Jones stuff is so much harder to find. I said, I was buying it example for example, you know, like by and large, pretty much. Yep. And um, he said, oh, he said, I just wanted to check because he said, I knew that, you know, you had a spare Marion that you sent, you know, Tony at one point. So I didn't know if you had any more spares. I said, well, the spare Marion's ended up happening because I was trying to find that stupid wrench that that mechanic came with. And I ended up buying a lot of figures, a lot, like a, a an auction lot um, that had a Marion in there back. This was like 2011, 2010 when I was doing this. Yeah. And, and the, they had a, a, a dude with the wrench. He was like, oh, I see. Yeah. So. Thank you very much for that, Marion Michael. But uh, I was not sh I was not fishing. For I know, I know. But it, uh, you know, it it, it finished out that collection. I've got all the LJN. I've got the twelve. Mm. I've a apart from like there, you know, there was a load of um, Indiana Jones toys. I think that came out like in Spain back mm. in the eighties. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, like Kenner and LJN, I've got I've got. Every I think the only thing the only thing I don't have is the map for belloc but i just made like a little reproduction one i rolled it up put it in his hand i'm not going to pay a fortune for a little postage size no <laughs> postage stamp size piece of paper so no i mean yeah i know i felt bad paying 80 bucks for that sonic screwdriver and that was after i got the price knocked down by like 30. Mm. so i mean and i get it some of these accessories get lost and they're hard to find i get it helmet mics from heavy metal from gi joe and all that crap but but yes. you're right there comes a point where it's like yeah it's rare and yeah it's expensive but you jerks at the toys the toy maker toy company you made it out of paper like mm -hmm. you made it out of paper how did you expect this to survive you thought a paper postage stamp was an exciting accessory for an action figure which i guess if you compare them to Imp imperial dignitary He's got one up on Imperial Dignitary because he comes with a piece of paper. But I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Mm. Would Imperial Dignitary's value in our esteem be upped by a small map or a TPS report? There's a there's a difference between value and price. True. <laughs> True. The price would be he might be up there with Yak Face, but value. <laughs> Definitely not. If he came with um, a cane and a removable miter, he wouldn't be worth it. I mean, right. I don't care what he came with. <laughs> right yeah. now, he's just got slinky hands. Yeah. I just want to put a slinky between his hands. It's like... <laughs> I once caught up um, this big. <laughs> uh, Wolfie762, thank you for the super chat. He says, the, the, the memory shelf we never got. Six boob dancer from Jabba's Palace, three boob woman from Total Recall, and a three boob cap dancer from Star Trek Five. Yeah, there are there aren't enough there aren't enough multiple mammary fictional characters in action figure form. They really have been neglected as a genre, and I think I I'm pretty sure if I just sent an anonymous memo to Brian Flynn at Super Seven, he'd correct that because that guy will make anything. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Wolfie. Uh, Jim Largo, thank you. He says, uh, it would be great if we could get vintage-style X-Wing pilots and astromechs with Dark Horse Rogue Squadron comic art card backs. Mm. I mean, yeah. I I would definitely consider purchasing some of those. That would be cool. I, I, can't, I can't get enough of the Rebel pilots. Uh, I, I love the Rebel pilots, so, yeah. 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 Uh, Tony Robles, thank you. He says, I kid you not, when they brought back the coins in the 2000s, did they bring the coins back in the 2000s? Did they? Really? I don't remember Probably. that, but, I mean, they must have. Yeah. He says, uh, I traded them for figures from my cousin. Uh, yeah. I, didn't work in the 80s. Why, why, why yeah. bring that back again, you know? And, uh, and Jason Anderson says... <clears throat> The powder of the Force coin collection, a small baggie and a bunch of coins. <laughs> <laughs> you use the coins to separate the lines out. So that you can... Yeah. I mean, do you think it was a way to get people to want to rebuy figures they already had? I, I can't even understand the logic. I... That's the only thing I can think of. Oh, they'll rebuy something they have because they want the coin. 
and and the, and I from what I understand, um, the coins that you mailed away for as part of the larger collection were the ones that they hadn't re-released the figures on cardbacks yet. So you were almost like they they were almost offering you, oh, and you can get a coin for every figure you already have by and large. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't think they've completed that whole run. I can't remember exactly how many coins they came out with, but um they around were, 60, 60 something, yeah. Yeah, around, around 60 something. It was a good number of your pre-existing figures would now have a corresponding coin, but like you said, Michael, I I never saw the appeal. I think it was a huge non-starter. Kid yeah. kid doesn't want a bunch of coins. I mean, even in the analog age where it was like more exciting to get little tchotchkes like that. I, Matt, right. no thanks. Yeah. I mean, if, if it had been a holographic shield, I might have been all over it. But <laughs> <laughs> Darth Vader and his holographic shield. Yeah. 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 He, he could fight Captain America for once. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is lenticular, mine is holographic. <laughs> all right. Now I want to talk a. A little bit about price. Uh, that's why I asked you gentlemen earlier on, you know, do you keep up with current pricing? So I think most people would agree that this is the easiest last 17 figure to get because he was readily available as a as a mail away. So you know, he was more abundant. Um, I was certainly familiar with this figure when I was a kid. Could never quite understand why they made him, but, you know, um, this is kind of so – I've got some a few slides here of sold listings. This is kind of an average price. I personally think you should be able to pick this figure up for actually cheaper than that. This should be a $25, $30 figure in good condition, mm -hmm. if you ask me. Yeah. Um, but this is where we start, and it only gets worse from here. <clears throat> oh. What? Jesus. Yeah. Hey, 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 uh, Nyquist. Notice the bent leg. <laughs> yeah. Bent leg, Nyquist. Yeah. Bent leg. There you go. Um, yeah, 400, this is a, a sold listing, eBay US. Um, I, I kind of went for a, the average, like a mint figure mm -hmm. and around the average price. I was not picking the most expensive one I could find because there were, were some, of you know, the ones that come with the coins, you know, you, you probably want to bump that up another 50 bucks or 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. Um, now uh, Brian Stevenson here says Yak Face is crazy. Yeah, Yak Face is a, a crazy price. What Ooh. the what? But it's not the craziest price. Yeah, we're not even close to done yet. Jesus. Oh, so I, I, I haven't done all of the figures, but this is the most expensive one that I could find. So... Michael, you you mentioned at the start of this that the last figure that you needed, uh -huh. um, and we, you know, most of us have seen your your video, right? Pop up Faber R two D two. Uh huh. Ten, eleven. The video came out ten years ago, so you got right. it eleven years ago. Ballpark. What did you pay? Ballpark. It was like one twenty. With. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> A nice condition one with a good sticker and an original saver. This is the average going rate. That is nuts, especially yes. when all three of us saw those piled up on pegs in 86. Yes. Mm -hmm. What? What? Discounted to like, because by 86, they were what, three and a half, like yeah. MSRP, and they were probably discounted to a buck and a half, maybe, maybe two. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Oh my I pulled God. all of these slides yesterday. And for anyone who knows, when you go into eBay and you look at sold listings, it's from the last 60 days. I don't think right. you can get um, information. Oh, I'm not the... doubting your, your – I, I don't doubt you. It's just in. it's shocking. It, it, it shocked me. It shocked me because when I was looking at these just a few years ago, this would top out at like 350, 400 maybe. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is nuts. That, that that's double. That that's doubled in three years, probably because of all the amazing Star Wars content that Disney's putting out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, 
Dial of Destiny didn't do anything to drop the prices of vintage Kenner indie stuff. So no, um, it didn't. It didn't. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah no. This, this this is absolutely nuts. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we've all seen the prices of Stan Solo stuff go up as soon as it's no longer available. I don't know what his pop up say, but but I imagine they're going for a pretty penny now as well. Oh, I would um, believe so. It's the only affordable option for a lot of people, you know. So. Wow, that's crazy. so. There they are. This leaves me in this predicament here, where these are the last four figures that I need to collect. We have um, Paplu, Lumat, Romba, and Warrock. Now, as we were talking earlier, some people say that Paplu and Lumat is technically the last fifteen because they were available on Return of the Jedi cards. And yes, although we didn't see a lot of them when we were in childhood. They are the easier Paplu and Lumat are easier to get than Romba and Warrock yeah, based right. on the prices that I'm looking at. Uh-huh. Um, so these are the last four figures I need to complete the collection. The challenge I have is that this is where we start. What? Unbelievable. This I'm... is where we start. And when I'm... I when I when I put that into Australian dollars with the conversion, that's like two hundred and twenty-five. Um, yeah, this is this is. If it's not available in Australia, I'm paying twenty, thirty dollars international shipping as well for a small figure. I, I'm <sighs> starting. I'm starting to get nervous now because all of my Ewoks, all of them are not in the glass case. They're on top of the glass case on the Ewok village, just collecting dust. I, I'm like, <gasps> oh my god! Like, I, you know, <laughs> what the hell. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, th I think Alejandro here says it really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, what's worse is the first four Ewoks at least were cool, and you know, you remember them in the movie. You don't, you, you really don't. I couldn't tell you which one died right. riding the uh, glider or got hit and shot by the. You know, like I don't know. I, I yeah, don't I get feel, I feel this like at all. I feel like this this Paplu is the one that might be recognizable because I think he's the one that's always like hanging out next to Chief Chirpa, like. But but you're right, Michael. Like all the others, the 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 archers and all that, and uh, you, who are they? Maybe they were in one shot when they walked up to the net trap or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So. Just for those of you in the chat, just try and keep a running tally here as we go. So it's $147 for, for Paplu. That's the average sold listing for a nice complete with original accessories. You know, if, uh -huh. you, you can get what you can get them with the original um, headgear, but a reproduction staff, you'll save a lot of money. But right. I want to I want to go for original. Sure. So now we get Lumac. So what? So that's euros. So in American dollars, that's 167. Um, a lot of that value is the bow because you can get Lumat with the headgear and the satchel right. without the bow for like half, if not less than half the price. Right. So you're literally paying like $80, $90 for sure. a bow accessory. Um, these are the two figures that came out on Return of the Jedi cards. So yep. they're easier to get. Now we have Romba. Oh, give me a break. Is that Rip. the same spear that came with Wicket? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that so it's not, a, it's not a different spear, yeah. No. Real quick, Michael Hinkson, he, he makes a good point. Paplu stole the speeder bike and was played by Kenny Baker. Okay. I mean, yeah. I didn't... I don't... I never knew the names as a kid of... I mean, I knew who Wicket was. I knew... Right, and stuff, but anyway, sorry, back to this. That's insane, mm. but it is, yeah, like Michael said, it's the same spear, yeah, yeah. So, um, so for these three, Romba, Paplu, and Lumat, I'm looking at $500 US, Jesus, oh my so it's God. like what, what, 140 and 160 for the first two, another 200 for this. That, that's that's five hundred. Yeah, that's five hundred dollars. Um, Look, I'm I'm being serious here. I'm not even setting you up for a joke, Tony. Back back when I bought mine, 2012 to 2014, and we thought prices were 
you know, over a hundred bucks for any particular figure seemed high. And I was going after Yak Face. I settled happily for just a few very minor paint yeah. rubs on a hand to get the price down. Mm -hmm. And I'm still happy with my purchase. I regret nothing. Are you sure you don't want to go in for a few paint rubs on some of these bastards? Like just, <laughs> uh, I, I, I happily will. As I said, yeah. you know, the Barada I picked up uh -huh. a couple of paint rubs in the backpack. That doesn't, that doesn't, yeah. I'm happy with that. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm making sure we, we know where we are. Okay. Yeah. No, no. For, for me, it was more around, certainly when I was searching these listings, it was complete original accessories. Uh -huh. As it says there in the listing, no repro. Right. So, this this is not the the higher end. Like if you want a graded one, mm -hmm. add one hundred and fifty dollars onto all of these price tags. So wow. we're at we're at five hundred bucks US with the first three, and then if I want to get the fourth and final, uh, the wait, head. what? What? <laughs> Jesus! And there's actually that there are for for all for the other three Ewoks. You look at the amount of listings that are up on eBay, whether they're sold or active listings. He's the hardest one. Yeah. And I've been looking for, you know, the last month, looking, you know, mm -hmm. two or three times a week. He doesn't show up that often. You know, the listings on him are a quarter of what the others are. So, yeah. And he's also got the slightly di uh, different color accessories as well. Yeah. 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 War, even when I got Warrock, it, Warrock, it was it, he was the hardest, or she, I don't even mm. know the gender, don't want to misgender the, the murder bear. Um, <laughs> was the hardest, was the hardest one for me to find as well. So that's that's insane pricing, though. Insane. Yeah, at least to me. I mean, I'm cheap yeah. though, but I mean, look, look he, is, he is the only Ewok with with kind of got with a war face, like he looks pissed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He he looks like he's either tweaked out a sociopath or he's going biscuit like there's something <laughs> like he's doing that he's doing that he's doing that stare you down and dare you kind of thing where he's like bring it like all right we'll fight barehanded if you want to and then he like cracks his neck and waits for the the first you look you're looking at me yeah you, <laughs> you're looking at me? yeah, yeah. <laughs> beach beach a wawa beach a wawa yuda. <laughs> So that's my uh, that's that, that's the final slide there. So so for me, I'm looking at roughly eight hundred dollars US to get the last four figures that I need. Now, I'm hundred percent certain that I would get them a lot cheaper at toy shows. Toy right. show, you can always get deals at toy shows. The problem is because of where I live, I don't get to go to toy shows. And even if I was down in Perth and went to a toy show, the likelihood that someone's going to be selling last 17 figures, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the availability of vintage toys in Western Australia is not the same as other parts of the world. Sure. You know, the, the population of Perth in the seventies and eighties was not even a quarter of what it is today. You know, we have, I think 50,000 families migrate to, Austra uh, to to Western Australia every year from the UK, Europe, and other places in the world. So it's it's not available. Um, um, Charles Volp, I am not looking for graded whatsoever. I'm not paying the extra money for grade. I don't want graded figures. Um, they, they don't. They're not very good for using in videos, are they, Michael? Graded figures? No, they're really not. I was just <laughs> thinking though. And I, I do I do mean this seriously. Um, the 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 women slash spouses in our lives, um, they really like it more when um, the money that you spend on a thing came from the selling of another thing rather than just outright. In other words, you're trading one for one, mm -hmm. and. I say this with all seriousness. I'm not setting you up for a joke, although if you'd like to laugh, you're welcome to do so. Um, you have recently shown um, a hilarious and acute disinterest in Marvel Legends. <laughs> However, they sell oh. secondhand very well because, as Good we point. know, a huge community of which our friend Laser Pants is a part of 
are addicted to them like black tar heroin. Mm -hmm. um, they go for good prices secondhand, and they might soften the blow of getting your last 17. You could sell laser pants like 20 spider man <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't I don't have 20 Spider-Man. I, I, I think I'm I think I've only got like three Spider-Man in the collection. <laughs> um but but not not yeah, just legends. But... Like I've I've got a lot of stuff that I would like to I, space has become a real issue for me. Mm -hmm. Um I don't like selling on eBay. As I said, I'm not a huge fan of Facebook groups. And the last time I was I was in Perth not long before Christmas, I went down to see Robbie Williams in concert, which was phenomenal um mm -hmm. an absolute showman michael if you ever get the opportunity you've got to see robbie live um i i went i went to visit my friend's collectible toy shop and he has a little bit of vintage in there but mm -hmm. it's a lot of you know modern action figure collectibles and comics and i always try and pop in and see him when i'm there he also hosts a like a toy show four times a year mm -hmm. which i haven't been to in a, in a long time and in fact since the last time i went They've now moved to a bigger, much better venue, which is only like a 10 minute drive from my, my dad's house. And he was like, Oh, if you ever, if you were ever in the area, and I think for me, it's, it's an 18 hour drive. It's like mm -hmm. Bobby having a drive to Joe Fest with a trailer full of Balabas <sighs> gear, you know? Um, but I said, Oh, but you know, but your tables always sell out really quick. You know, normally on the day of the show, they sell out all the tables for the next show. Mm -hmm. People want to, want to book in and all of that but because i've i've known him a long a long time um and whenever i have had tables there in the past he's like he said, yeah, everyone's always asking for more vintage more vintage and he said and there are people there who sell some vintage mm -hmm. so you'll you'll come in with a table with nothing but vintage he said if you ever wanted to, he was like we would create a new table space for you so i'm seriously considering that like i've got I've got some boxed Evil Knievel stuff I need to move on. I've got boxed Micronauts. Mm -hmm. I was going to do a video about and just don't have the interest in talking about Micronauts. Right. Um, I have all sorts of stuff. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's one of the, We try and convince ourselves of certain things. So if the money happens to end up in my PayPal account mm -hmm. and never actually touches my bank account, See? did I really spend that money no, you, you traded one for one. You, you, it was like a David Copperfield magic trick. It was just a whoosh. You yeah. Know? I, if, you, you know, you know what I need to do? I need to speak to Matt from Reclaimers Vintage mm. and just go, look, mate, this is what I'm looking for when you come across it. Um, Matt's always really good. He just lets me claim stuff on his, on his, in, well, I'm on his Patreon as well, but I just claim stuff mm -hmm. and he's like, well, you don't want me to. I, I recently claimed a um, a Kenner Superpowers Superman uh -huh. that he had. I also I wanted to get. He had a Batmobile, a Batman, and a Robin, and I wanted to get the whole lot. Mm -hmm. and Scuba Pete beat me to the Batman, so I didn't go with the Batmobile and all that. So I just went with Superman. Um, but Matt was like, "So you want to pay for this now and ship it, or just add it to the pile and keep going?" I was like, "Add it to the pile." It's like once every three months. I'm like, right, okay, I've got enough. Box it all up now and ship it out. So that's yeah. nice. That's cool. Yeah, if you can do that, the the thing that I, you were talking about, the PayPal thing, my credit card gives me points. Mm -hmm. And maybe three years ago, all of a sudden, I can access those points through PayPal, so I can just deduct and not pay anything. So it's like free money to my mind you know right so that's yeah that's piggybacking on that idea i i find i do that all the time thanks pete <laughs> <laughs> hey look fair Bye. fair man you, you you beat me to it i was i was procrastinating um but I, i'm still happy he, he had a really really nice superman um which i've and that's going to be my first kind of superpowers so oh i didn't, you know, know, I didn't have any of those I, I, I used to have a Batman and a Joker, which mm -hmm. I picked up at a toy show because they were on some kind of busted up cards. So the figures were mint. Right. I could slide them out of the bubble. But um, again, I, I was trying to purchase something a few years ago and I needed to collect funds. So I moved those on. But I'm, I've been seriously 
considering starting to collect Marvel Secret Wars. Really? Because well, I had them in I had a lot of them in childhood. Oh no, no, lot. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that the toys themselves aren't worth collecting. I'm just saying that because of the way the paint rubs off of them, I hope you've got Mickey Mouse gloves or yeah. something to hold them with. That's yeah. a yeah. Wow, are you gonna collect yeah, all the shields um, too? Uh, I don't know. With all the shields. lenticular inserts? See, to me, those aside from Captain America, those lenticular shields with all their little inserts are like the Power of the Force coins. I don't even care about them to have a complete super, uh, Secret Wars figure. Now, some people be like, that's sacrilege. You don't have a complete one. I'd be like, well, I wouldn't have played with those shields anyway. Aside from Captain America, who's the only super, he's the only Secret Wars figure I have in my collection that has one of those shields because it has his yep. lenticular inserts in it. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be interested, but I, I, in, in, in the, in the shields because I don't remember playing with them in childhood, and I don't, I don't think I had Captain America. Um, mm -hmm. but I had Spider Man, Wolverine. Uh, Dr. Octopus, Dr. Doom. I had one of the cycles, whether it was Doom Cycle or mm -hmm. one of the others. Um, but yeah, there, there was a year there where I had a lot of that stuff and I, I was playing with it. And it's it's one of those toy lines from my childhood that I've never made a video about. I can't yep. make a video about it if I don't collect them. Right. But then, of course, you know, but if I'm going to do that, then I don't know why I'm on eBay buying vintage Mego Flash Gordon stuff either. Oh, I went off on a tangent this morning and yeah. <laughs> wow. You're talking about the stuff from uh, the, you're talking about the, the, these guys or these guys, these guys, the, the oh. little ones were Mattel, uh, the 10 yeah. inch one. They are the exact same body that they used for the doctor who, where, where you've just got the, right. Group. right. The, the, the 10 inch size. Yeah. The same body. Uh -huh. There's four figures in a play set and, that's yeah. wow i mean i'm looking wow. <laughs> just looking <laughs> those yeah. kenner superpowers though they they display gorgeously they They're do beautiful figures yeah. i have a in fact it was a gift from joseph i have a superman mm -hmm. and uh i had thought in fact i i might have messaged michael years ago about that i got the it was the robin with but it had the the switch on the back so it wasn't yep. The toy. So I repl right. I replaced it with the a, a mm -hmm. real one. Yeah. And and I have a Batman, but I I look at those. It's the pricing that keeps me out of it. But those again, I, that was another one where I, I collected them up years ago. Right. And we say years ago, like it was the eighties yeah. or something. Right. <laughs> but it was, like, it was just long ago enough that you know pre pandemic and pre toys mm -hmm. getting. Out. I mean, at the time. Cyborg was probably one of the most expensive loose mint figures I'd ever bought, like as far as the price I paid. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking to myself, I was like, my God, he's more expensive than the blank. And I bought the blank twice, once loose, once carded. So, I mean, like, yeah, superpowers, when you've got them on display, it's just boom. It's like, it's like, it's like having the original 12 to 21 Star Wars figures in a display case with you know the the yeah. x-wing and tie fighter and, and land speeder i mean it's that iconic when you see them it's really impressive it's just like what the heck um yeah so. and for some reason in my mind i don't need the vehicles for those most mm -hmm. toys you want play sets and but they they pop so well just you know, because they are yeah. these well, icons. Also, aside from the bat vehicles, all the right. all the vehicles are dumb. Yeah, like, right. Why does Superman need a justice jogger? Why does <laughs> Why does Robin and and some of these other characters right. need this little bubble UFO thing to fly around in? What's up right. with that? I know the only other the one. Probe. What's that? What is that? Probe. The probe. Yeah. The only yeah. other one that makes any sense is Lex Luthor's little ship because he was always. Pre-crisis, Lex Luthor was a mad scientist who was always coming up with these technological weapons to right, fight yeah. the super friends and whatever. So that one made sense to me. But yeah, most of the vehicles you don't need. The, the only vehicles I have in my collection are the Batmobile and the Batcopter. Batman. It's the only right. two. I don't want any of the right. others. My, yeah, they make a, my, my they dignity, make a plane? They, they never made the invisible jet, but... No, um, I meant a bat plane, not a... Oh, no, they never made a bat plane, okay. just a Batcopter. Okay. Um, okay. 
I have been tempted to pick up McFarlane's Wonder Woman Invisible Jet for my superpowers line just to have it, but I haven't done it yet. So couldn't you just say you have an invisible jet? That's what I've been doing for the last 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's there. You just you can't see. Right. Oh, and I have the I have the I have the uh Hall of Justice, but that's playset. Right. Of course. Yeah. The yeah. McFarlane one's out of scale though, isn't it? Yeah. Only by a hair as far as the vehicles go. It's only when you stand the figures together next to them that you see the the posing makes a scale disparity happen because the way yeah. it's 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 people say it's slight. I think it's a little more than slight, I but agree. the vehicles I think would scale just fine with the yes. uh vintage figure. So I am tempted to pick up that invisible jet for Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. so. Catch up on a couple of chats here. So KBA, thank you. He says, Star Wars coins or G.I. Joe camouflage makeup packs? Which would you rather have as a kid? The G.I. Joe camouflage, for sure. I mean... Did, did I, you ever the pull, pull the end of the little sachet and actually put it on I, your face? I've still, got unopened, I've still got unopened ones of those. And, yeah. and, and it's because they came with my childhood figures, and I was like, I don't want to put anything on my face. But I would be the one person that really needed it on my face because I'd stick out like a glow in the dark figure on a mission and just be shot, you know. No, I I actually use that stuff in chat. If I was going to go and play in the woods with my friends, I would put that on my. The thing with GI Joe that I never liked is when they did the mini figures, like the yeah. micro collection. Yep. Like, why does my GI Joe have a mini action figure statue with him? Like, it yeah. ne never made sense to me. So dumb. I lucked out. My I had a much older brother, eleven years older than me, so he was in the army, and he got. I got the real stuff, so I would make up all that yeah. shit on. I didn't <laughs> get the toy camo paint. I would just put on the real stuff. I remember. Oh, he 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 worked. I forget what his posi what he did, but he he brought home cases of K rations, uh -huh. which I thought was the coolest thing ever. I'm eating this shit food in these. <laughs> hands, but I thought it was the greatest thing that I'm, I'm I got real K rations and C rations. Did and you have a big problem with constipation for your child? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, no, but yeah, I, I could see how that really C, C rations are designed to, yeah, to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Vankman, uh, Vankman, thank you very much. He says he paid $65 for a loose minty pop up lightsaber rtd2 20 years ago and college age me thought that was steep wow well, well six, you I have 20 just, years ago that's a lot of money <laughs> you have just made a 1000 percent profit yeah 1000 <laughs> percent. yeah Something well like that. you can't make one thousand percent profit if there's a cost there's always going to be you know, if you buy something for a dollar and you sell it for two, you only made 50% profit. You marked it up 100%, but half of the money coming in is paying for the cost. So you really only made 50% profit, but that's a whole thing. Anyway, I digress. Yeah. Yeah. Me, right. me and Michael aren't good at math. So it's no, I'm terrible at math. <laughs> terrible. Well, it's profit versus market, but we're not here to do spreadsheets and accounting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Master 142, thank you. He said Ewoks are a, Ewoks are a better return than my stock investment. I'm going to have to find my financial advisor and give him an iPad. Yeah, well, but but do they? Well, they do sell because, as I said, I wasn't showing um, you know items that were for sale on eBay. These are items that have sold. Right. So yeah, they they do sell. And man, that three hundred dollars for Warrock. Like mm -hmm. I, I just don't know if I'm ever going to get over that hurdle. If I'm ever going to complete this line. Um, well, do you have any Lego sets you can sell? They go for big money. I, I don't have a lot of Lego. I, re, I do, yeah. and, and what I do is all, is all modern. But um, yeah, if, if anyone's out there and has got some spare Ewoks and, and they're interested in trading for some some other nice vintage stuff, but Mego, $6 million man, Evil Can Evil, Micronauts, G.I. Joe. I've got some carded vintage G.I. Joes that I, I don't want. I don't want carded figures in the collection. So. Yeah, um, a, a card, I've got a nice carded range viper if anyone's interested. <laughs> um, I, just to, I just have to give Scuba Pete a shout out. Scuba Pete just sent me a message saying the invisible jet is on its way to your house. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I, I mean, I can't be more grateful. He, he didn't 
he didn't tell me to say anything. He might even be angry that I did say something, but thank you, Scuba. That's too kind of you, sir. And it will be on display by the time I do part three of my uh, studio tour update. So thank you. This community is great sometimes. See, yeah. Pete, he just feels bad about stealing that Batman from me. So no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see I'm Tony we, we have uh, well, Tony if you had just told me when you were here in June that you were also looking for superpowers I could have solved that problem for you which I wasn't looking for them in June <laughs> I know I know I'm just saying timing is everything we we if time makes yeah. of us all so wait what's Vinkman saying here um uh, first of all, thank oh. you for another super chat, Venkman. He says, Michael, if you want to give yourself a heart attack, look at how expensive the blank is now. Oh, God. Okay. Um... Bobby mentioned it in his collection tour because he recently got a carded one, and I want to say he paid a grand or more. Oh, my. Okay, that one's graded, though. All right, so hold on. I'm looking at... Uh, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Is this one okay? This one is unopened, rare, sealed, ungraded, five thousand dollars. What? Yeah, they want. That, it's got to be a decimal right? issue. That's that's okay. Oh, okay. So one sold on November twenty seventh. For two thousand seven hundred and twenty-two dollars, carded, unpunched. It's sold in November. That might be the one Bobby bought. Who knows? <laughs> well, I don't. I don't think Bobby paid that much. Jesus. And in the, oh no, no wait. One sold in January on January twentieth for twenty-five hundred dollars. An incomplete loose one with no accessories sold for six hundred bucks. One sold on November 15th of 2023 for three grand. These are all ungraded, by the way. Unbelievable. Okay, so fun fact, everybody. Um, while we're talking rare figures, last 17 prices, it amazes me how fast all this stuff has accelerated in the last 10 to 12 years because I bought my first blank, loose, complete, but near mint-ish, um, but complete. Um for uh, $400 uh, back in 2011, 2012, something like that. And then two and a half years later, I bought a carded mint unpunched one for $450. So I'm, oh no, I'm sorry. I got that backwards. Apologies. <laughs> that didn't make any. That didn't make sense. Um, sorry. Let me. Let me. I flip knew it, we knew what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. Flip yeah. that story for you. Yeah. The first one I bought was carded unpunched for four fifty. The loose one two and a half years later, but complete was four hundred and fifty. But now yeah. we're looking at. I, I can't do the maths on this, Tony. So whatever the percentage hike has been on all those, and I thought I was paying insane prices then. It's so, more than tripled, yeah. Yeah. That, um, that, I can't get over that. I mean, yeah. that's like Mego Star Trek Enterprise bridge playset pricing. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Do you have that bridge? I do not. I got no, not for that. It when I was looking at it, it was like eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars, and for that blow mold thing, I got the beautiful cardboard one, uh -huh. and I love it. So yeah. it displays so much better. Well. And if it was ever, 35 if bucks. Ever, if you ever want like a sweetheart deal on one, you I'll I'll save it for you. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it, but no. So. Mm, no, I mean it's I oh you don't that. you can you you can let me down easy. I wasn't trying to sell it immediately. No, I know you weren't. I no, no, I but I do appreciate got, like it. if you suddenly got like the itch and the and you I, were yeah. twitchy about it, I would definitely relinquish to you oh, God, that oh, I, it's not on display or anything. I, I did the video. super fragile, isn't it? Oh but see, mine has the box and unused sticker sheets, and then I replicated the stickers and put those on there for the video instead. So like, yep. it has all this extra. I even kept all the sprues and everything. Like it's wow. it's complete, and it's got the box and the instruction sheet. So it's like, Damn. it's even got the unused um, 
no stick anymore foam pads that you use to put it together the double sided i didn't uh -huh. use those either i just use real thin um removable 3m double sided tape the, nice yeah thought ahead on that one <laughs> nice it's yeah, it, it's it's nuts how how everything has gone you know i've been in this toy collecting game for most of my life pretty much mm -hmm. um you know, not 90, yep. 1993, I went to that toy show with my dad and he got that box of action man off of that guy and I've, I've never stopped. And for a lot through the 90s and even the very early 2000s, I, I wouldn't even look twice at Centurions and Mask and things like that because it's oh, but Palatoy Action Force. Oh, that stuff's a dime a dozen. Don't worry about it. Then when I want to start collecting it, all of a sudden, you know, Aside from these Star Wars prices, if I could do it all over again, I've told myself I would have I would have gone for all the the obscure, less popular lines first back when eBay first came out because that stuff was going for nothing. Yeah, and but that's the way the market works: is the most popular stuff, you know, gets chased first, and then people go after the the rest of it, and then it goes up. Somebody, yeah, said, well, they get priced out of everything else. You know, they're getting priced out of GI Joe and Star Wars, so it's well, yeah. what's What's next? What's next? Yeah. yeah. And uh, the three of us, I mean, none of us collect for the money. We all, I mean, we'd be happy if the shit didn't yeah. cost anything today, you know? Yep. I mean, it's not for that, but yeah, that's insane. Those yeah. Prices. Anyway. No, just, no, you're right. You're hundred percent right. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not for the money for me because it, it'll be, I, I, I feel for my son, he's got to try and figure out what to do with all this shit. When, once I die, it's, well, you know? if it makes you feel any better, he won't have any problem with the Star Wars stuff. I have a, I have a firm feeling the Star Wars stuff is always going to be desirable generation after generation for quite a while. Um, the Transformers stuff still has a following because Transformers seems to keep reinventing itself, but it's not going to be as desirable as Star Wars. Right. Um, the other stuff is probably going to end up being quite generational for all of us, and... Well, unless, of course, Ghostbusters suddenly comes back with this new movie, in which case maybe there's something there. But you're also going to be fighting against all the people who are in younger generations that just don't collect stuff anymore. Right. Um, they're going to want, they're going to be paying for the prices you're paying right now for Star Wars Last 17. They're going to be paying it for dead cell phones like the LG Chocolate, just so they can hold yep. it in their hand and remember the good times. Like, I, I honestly believe, bought, you know? yeah, yeah. I honestly believe if if my son eventually he's not a really a collector of of, of anything. Mm -hmm. If he was to become a collector, he'd be like, right, I want to have an iPhone one, an iPhone two, and I, that'll be what he collects, you know. Um, but yeah, every, everything everything's digital now, so mm -hmm. we joke about that. But there, are, I don't. But there are people that collect like. Apple IIe's E's and yeah, I, you know, I have old friends, Commodore sixty fours. I have friends who are uh, mid to younger millennials, and they are obsessed with collecting VHS and mm. and collecting VCRs and stuff. Not because they grew up with them, but because they found the technology interesting. Which is why LPs are back for some. Yeah. They they love yep. collecting LP records. Um, when you can go into a store today, and they have a massive LP section, but they won't carry movies on Blu Ray anymore. I know I'm living Just in a bizarro gonna... universe at this point. Yeah. It's like, what is going on? Um, yeah. You can't get yeah. compact discs or, or or movies, but you can get, yeah. I, yeah. That makes no sense to me. Yep. Going through my teenage years in the 1990s, I never, ever would have envisioned that by the time I got into my 30s, people would be collecting the sneakers that I was I know. wearing right? in the 90s. I yep. never thought that would become a thing. I, um, there's a store at the mall here where it's the guy sells uh, secondhand discontinued sneakers from way back when. Each shoe is shrink wrapped after it's been cleaned, and they sit there in, in pairs in glass cases. And some of them are like eight, nine, ten uh, thousand bucks. And you're like, somebody's feet were in those at one time. And they're like, yeah, but they're Air Jordan fives. And you're like, yeah, I know. I wore them when I was twelve. That doesn't ugh. like it's it's crazy. Are they like? Do people collect members only jackets? I mean, what is? I bet you they do. That's insane. Yeah, that's insane. Um, 
laser pants was telling me the other day that there's some there were some 90s brand of jeans called J jncos or something like that that now kids are like spending crazy money on online because now they're trendy among young people and they they don't mm -hmm. that company's not in business anymore they're paying like over a thousand dollars to get a pair of old jeans yep yeah Just Mm -hmm. the, 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 the thing I find really crazy about sneakers, though, is like rubber rots and deteriorates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, um, so I have does a, leather. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a mannequin in the in the other room that's got like the old kit and equipment that I wore in, in Iran. And when I moved from the last house into this one and I, I picked it up, the soles of the boots just stayed stuck on the floor. I lost the mm -hmm. entire. They were the original, like a, an original pair of combat boots that I wore in Iraq. I'm like, mm -hmm. the sole is completely gone, where it's just been sitting on this mannequin for a few years. So I just went out and bought another you know, cheap pair of desert boots to put on it. But um, people are out there collecting this stuff that's literally going to fall apart. Like, yeah, you can replace an O-ring in a GI Joe. You can't replace the sole of an Air Jordan One or whatever the hell it is. Well, it's like in your most recent video, Tony, where you talked about the Frogman. You're like, I'm not buying another Action Man Frogman because no. that suit just keeps falling apart. You're just, and there was a what was the collectible in 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 my wheelhouse where they kept doing that with it for years, and I I kept saying I'm not going to buy that because it's a ticking time bomb. What was that toy? I'll think of it in a minute, but it was like that. It was one of those ones where people kept paying more and more because they, they wanted a, a mint example of something that was literally crumbling to dust because of the material. Yeah. yeah well, Mego uh, had all the stretch figures, you know, the uh -huh. stretch Batman and yep. all, all that. And, and people still today in the, in the action man collecting community are paying more and more and more all the time for these frogman outfits. And it's like, what are you doing? You are, throwing your money away like I, I do get it if you get one mint on the card never opened because mm -hmm. at least then if it does dry rot and go at least it's still in the, the right. card and you get the artwork and everything but uh yeah i i will i i i paid some i bought a boxed action man frogman from bob breakin mm -hmm. I, I i wanted it for a number of reasons a it was one of my favorite boxes because i had the figure in childhood B, it came from Bob's personal collection, and C, it was still sealed. Yep. But then over the years that I own it, the tape dry rotted and fell off. Yep. And Eagle Eye Action Man figures have a notorious, the, the, there's a rubber connector in the neck that, that rots. Uh -huh. So people just go in and replace it with elastics. I'm like, I'm going to go in and replace this elastic and put the head back on. I took the figure out of this never opened box, and it had dropped the, the Frogman suit had dry rotted. It was yep. like it was great when it was mint sealed, and now it's kind of open and it's ruined it for me. There's <laughs> there's really no way around it. <laughs> oh, Bushman. Yeah. So apparently Bushman uh follows my Facebook page and he's referring I, I read this this morning. <laughs> Go ahead, Michael. No, I just, just the, the, the summary is that um to the to your point, Tony, about things that deteriorate. And uh, and whatever, because we're toy collectors and we're experienced, we look into this kind of stuff before we invest in anything. And mm -hmm. uh, if we care about it and we don't have money to just set on fire. And uh, I had heard there for a while that there was this um, unauthorized but very likeness accurate um, adult doll uh, <laughs> in one to one scale of Lara Croft. And I was like, yeah, that's gross. But then I thought, well, but what if it would really be this amazing display mannequin for all the props and replicas and, and stuff that I have for Tomb Raider? Because I've got her her axes and I've got her guns and I've got, got a backpack and I've got all this stuff. And so I, I wasn't actually going to you know just jump in there and do that. I went and did my homework like you did with the prices of the last 17. I went and I looked yep. around and tried to figure out what was up. And sure enough, I found out that no, no, these things are built for one purpose. They're not built to be display mannequins, even though they're far more realistic looking. They mm -hmm. are lifespan of five to eight years max. And that's if you don't do anything to it. YouTube, I didn't say the word, so you can't demonetize this. Um, <laughs> if you don't do anything to it and it's just mint in the box, it's still going to. And I was like, yeah, see, you got to do your homework before you invest in any collectible of any kind because. 
Frogman from Action Man, unauthorized life size play toy for Tomb Raider. Like all of it, it's it's all suspect. You gotta you gotta <laughs> you know your homework. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and, and they recommend you know for 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 best longevity to store it laying permanently on its back, laying permanently on its back with no clothes on it because apparently I'm like, what is this? Well, I, I kept visualizing like scenes from Taken, like where Liam Neeson just kicks in the door to a bedroom. And he's like, oh my god, you know, like it was just I was like, this is gross, and oh. and that's the but that's the whole thing. It's like okay, nothing. Best laid plans, but good thing I did my homework. Nothing about this is going to uh, be a good project for me. So moving, moving on. You know, gonna go get my yeah. invisible jet now. Thanks, Scuba. Like that's that's a far more <laughs> doable, yeah. doable project. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, gentlemen, um, this has been a ton of fun. I. I I thought I was going to walk away from this having made a decision as to whether I'm going to complete the line or not, and I'm. Probably more confused than ever. <laughs> <laughs> at, at, at the end of the day, it's you know the, the nature of being a collector. Like it's always going to gnaw at me if I don't. And, and and if I, I could be saying you know, the, but the prices are crazy now. What if I wait another three years and then we're sitting down here going, yeah, Lumat and Paplu are a grand each, and Warrock and Romba are two grand each. So. Mm -hmm. I've got to do something. Um, but just before we sign off, I think we've got one more super chat here. Uh, yes, we do. From Brendan Haley. Uh, thank you, Brendan. Uh, just some love for guys who help brighten my days and drive the desire which lessens my bank balance. <laughs> Happy Australia Day. This lamb chop is for you. Now, for those of you who didn't know, today is Australia Day. For me, for you gentlemen, Australia Day is tomorrow. Um so, which is why I'm doing a stream on a Thursday night because it's a national holiday. So it's Friday here, and I don't have to work. So, uh, um, yeah, the, the topic came up. Um, had some great guests. I want to thank you very much for taking the the time to join me. Uh, this was a lot of fun. And um, guys, what have you got going on, Michael Schaefer? How's your YouTube channel going? <laughs> it's still non-existent. Um, I do need to. Uh, I, I was thinking about filming another. Uh, toy room tour a, a handful of people have seen it but that's like two years old um mm -hmm. yeah i've got i have no youtube channel but still collecting still plugging away here and there nice <laughs> and michael anything you want to anything you want to plug sir anything you got coming up uh yeah so i'm i'm doing a video uh just scripted it uh i'll be filming it tomorrow it's a five pager so it shouldn't take too long it's called gi joe dropping the mic so for anybody who has been clamoring for retro blasting to get back into the vintage toy commentary game with a video you're about to get yourself a classic little retro blasting ditty um so that's coming soon i'm working on a video about a custom lego build um that i did of timothy dalton's aston from the living daylights um that should yes. be fun it's minifigure scale speed champion style uh mm -hmm. lego car and then um, I'm working on a video that's probably going to be later in, in March um, coming down the pipeline. It is um, it's about the history of uh, the uh, it's about a history. It's about the history of the Tomb Raider guns. In other words, how those weapons evolved in the mythology and finally yep. became a signature thing like Indiana Jones hat and whip. It took a while to get there. So I'm chronicling that. And there's a little bit of extra fun in that because Scott Hughes and I embarked on a project um, to see what it was all about. Firsthand experience, if you know what I mean. So there's that. And then um, lastly, I'm still watching Thundercats episodes for my eventual Thundercats Redux. I'm working on uh, a video called Top Gun versus Iron Eagle which will be coming out soon. Um, Tony is regretting asking me this question at this point. Um, well, no, but um, I think Melinda has a bone to pick with you. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, Dreamland, Dreamland is on Saturday. Uh, thank you, for everybody, for uh, remembering that. Uh, Dreamland, they've been working on that nonstop. Conrad and Melinda have been working on that for, for over, like, they work on everything the moment the last Dreamland ends, but yeah. This particular month, they've been all hands on deck working on this one. Um, and it's about some really quirky, obscure vintage television shows that 
I caught clips of, and I'm like, I don't even know how to process this. Like I, what, what? Um, so that should be a good episode. Um, so yeah, there's a lot in the hopper right now. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I look forward to all of it. Um, I do. Uh, Dreamland's always on a little bit early for me. I sometimes manage to catch like the last half an hour, but it's something mm -hmm. I always enjoy going and, and, and re-watching. So, uh, yeah, I've got um, pretty sure the next video you're going to see from me is also a vintage G.I. Joe video um, about, about G.I. Joe army builders, a you know, different topic to Michael's, and a bunch of other stuff coming. Um, I think George Aitken asked me something about Desert Rat. Desert Rat will be returning as soon as my action force mm -hmm. series four arrive and i'll be doing as i typically do with every wave of valiverse action force do a a big feature video about the the, the next line of toys so mm -hmm. yeah loads of stuff on the way thank everyone for being here thank you to my co-hosts and uh we'll see you next time yeah and scuba Pete, right? thank you, scuba pete thank you for posting that link to the broken vader supercut i forgot to mention that it's broken vader's 10th anniversary this year not ours ours was 2012 we celebrated that all year in 2022 but broken vader uh we did a supercut yesterday of all of his major appearances and that's live right now so did he get a birthday cake uh no he's not really a cake guy he's he's more of yeah. a you just can't get a handle on it. <laughs> yeah, he, he doesn't know how to slice it anymore, and it just gives him, you know, stress and anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. He can throw it at me, though. I don't know how he does that. Imagine him, like, <laughs> you expect me to eat frosting? Yeah, I, I just, I can't imagine <laughs> all, that. All over his vents. <laughs> <Just like. Yeah. laughs> all right, gentlemen. Well, thank you very much. Thank you to everyone in the chat, and we will see you all soon. Bye -bye. See you, everyone. Take care.